The fastest way to get better at coding is by building projects that actually teach you something. I'm Alien, I've been coding for over 3 years and in this video I will show you how to choose the right projects to build as a beginner, how to approach them effectively and I'll demonstrate it all by building a cool typing game in C Sharp. Let's get started. The point of building projects as a beginner is not only to learn how to write code, structure projects and understand syntax, but especially to develop problem solving skills, like breaking problems down into smaller parts and solving them individually, which is one of the core skills of a programmer. When learning a programming language like C Sharp, you usually practice by building console applications. The natural next step is to move on to web applications, mobile apps or whatever you're interested in building. This is the step many people skip, actually building projects with what you know at this stage. Doing so helps you start thinking like a programmer and makes whatever discipline you pursue next much easier. How I would recommend deciding what to build is either by thinking of small tasks you'd like the program to perform or by looking at simple games you've played or even games you find online. This often involves a lot of problem solving to implement the game logic, which is why they're commonly used in job interviews as well. I'll start with something that might seem a bit challenging for a beginner, but it's still very doable if we break it down into smaller steps. I'll show you how to build a typing game where the user has to type a displayed sentence as quickly and accurately as possible. At the end, the program will show how long it took and how many errors were made. I've created a C-Sharp console application here in Visual Studio. We have our program class and the main method inside it, which is the entry point of our application where the app starts running. Here we'll define each step we need to take to make our program work in the form of comments before writing the actual code. This is also the approach I'd recommend you take in your other project. The first thing we want to do is explain the game with a few lines. Then we need to show the sentence the user has to type. For that, we'll store it in a variable. After, we'll wait for the user to get ready and start typing. Let's put that into code. We print the name of the game and a quick explanation using console.writeLine. Then I am storing the sentence the user needs to type in a string variable. I just came up with this sentence, typing games usually use weird or random ones like this. I could have written a better one, I know, but let's move on. Finally, I print that sentence on the screen. I edit a new line before and after it just to give it some space and make it easier to read in the console. The next thing we want to do is give users a moment to get ready before they start typing. To ensure the timer doesn't start immediately when the app runs, we'll wait for a key press from the user. This way, the next line of code won't execute until that point. We'll then clear the screen so it's clean and focused, show the sentence again and prompt them to start typing. Typing. Let's put that into code. First, we use the console.writeLine method to let the user know they can start whenever they're ready. Then the console.readKey method waits until they actually press a key. Once they press a key, we call the console.clear method to wipe everything off the screen. This makes the interface cleaner and helps them focus on the sentence. Next, we print the sentence again to remind the user. I'm adding a line break at the end for a bit of spacing. Finally, we write the console.write with the message start typing here so the user knows exactly where to begin typing. Alright, now that the user is about to start typing, we need a way to measure how long it takes them to finish. For that, we're going to use a timer and we also need to capture the user's input. If you want help building projects or learning C Sharp and .NET in general, the easiest and fastest way in my experience is to get direct feedback and guidance tailored to you. That's why I created the .NET Squad community where you'll get access to everything I wish I had known when I first started learning .NET. And you can start for free. Imagine learning a skill like programming with constant guidance so you always know your next step, having a place to go whenever you're stuck or something isn't working in your code and connecting with like-minded people to make it easier. The best part, as I said, you can try it for free. It's basically a week of free coaching. The link is in the description. I highly recommend checking it out. Now let's get back to the video. This is the point in any new project where you might encounter a task you haven't done before, like measuring time, and need to search for a solution. This will happen often in new projects, but that's a good thing. It's how you learn new skills as you build. In our case, we can handle this functionality using the stopwatch class in C Sharp, which provides properties and methods to measure time, exactly what we need. So we'll create a stopwatch object like this. 
Then right before the user starts typing, we start the timer by calling the stopwatch.start method. From this point on, the stopwatch is running and will help us calculate how quickly the user types the sentence. We'll stop it later when they finish. Next, we grab whatever the user types using console.read line, which waits until they press enter after typing. I'm also adding the null coalescing operator, this double question marks, to handle the case where the input might be null. What it does is uh, return the value on the left hand side if it's not null, otherwise, it returns the right handed side. This ensures we never end up with a null value in our code. Now that the user has finished typing the sentence and hit enter, the next thing we want to do is stop the timer so we know how long it took them to type it. Let's add that in code. First we stop the stopwatch by calling stopwatch.stop. This freezes the timer at the exact moment the user finished typing. Then we get the total time that passed using stopwatch.elapsed, a property of our stopwatch object and we store that in a variable called time taken. This gives us a time span value, which is what we use in C-sharp to store time intervals. Now that we have the sentence the user typed and the original sentence we gave them, the next thing we want to do is compare the two and count how many mistakes they made. This way we can give them some feedback on how accurate they were. We need a variable to store the number of errors, which will be calculated by a count errors method that we'll create right now. This method needs to take the test sentence and the user's input as arguments. We'll create our method outside the main method. Here we're declaring a method that takes in two strings and returns an integer, which is the number of errors. Inside the method, we create an errors variable to keep track of how many mistakes we find. Then we calculate the length of the shorter sentence, just in case the user typed more or less than expected, and store it in a variable. Next, we loop through each character up to that length. And inside the loop, we check if the characters at each position are different. If they are, we increase the error count by one. After the loop, we also check for any extra characters that weren't compared, like if the user typed too much or too little. And we add that difference to the error count. Finally, we return the total number of errors. So now we know exactly how many characters the user got wrong and we can use that to show them their results, which is what we're gonna do right now to wrap up the game nicely. First, we print a little header to separate the results section from the rest of the game. And then we display how long it took the user to type the sentence. We're using total seconds, the property of the time span struct with colon F2 at the end to show the time with just two decimal places, simply to make it cleaner to read. And finally, we show how many errors the user made. And that's it. We've built a fun little typing game where the user types a sentence, we track their speed and accuracy, and show them how they did. Let's run the app and test it. This is how our game starts. If we press any key, the timer will begin, and let's try to type the sentence we have here. Then, when we hit enter, we can see how long it took to type the sentence and how many mistakes we made. Now a challenge for you, go ahead and increase the complexity of this game by adding more sentences to the program and generating a random one for users to type. Or if you'd like, try building an other simple game that you might enjoy even more. If this was helpful to you, you'll love the video on the screen. It walks you through the right next steps to become a C-sharp and .NET developer. So click on it, thank you for your time, and I'll see you there.